but you can. I've always been one for which I want to touch my nose to the floor. If you haven't got yourself a hot beverage of choice yet, I think you should. This is gonna be a long one. And if you are not drinking that hot beverage of choice out of a mug of positivity, which is extremely fitting for the video I'm about to film, they're linked down below. You should definitely pick one up. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is a long awaited video that I have known I need to film for 365 days. <laughs> Today is my one year fitness journey anniversary. 365 days ago, I decided that I wanted to make some serious and permanent changes to my life, to the way I live <laughs> my life. <laughs> if you've been following me since the beginning, you guys will know that I have always preached about body positivity, self-love, embracing who you are no matter how you look, no matter how much you weigh, knowing your self-worth regardless of the shell that you are living in, the external part of you. I have always talked about it since I was about 15 years old. I am now 23 and I have come a long way since then. First things first, I'd like to put out a trigger warning. I will be talking about some hard hitting things today. I will be talking about eating disorders, um, depression. Obviously I'll be talking about food, calories, over exercising and some things that I know will be extremely triggering for some people. And if you are one of those people, I really suggest you click off. I don't want to put you in danger. I don't want you to put yourself in any danger by watching this video. There will be another video on Thursday talking about my jewelry. <laughs> so you can come back then um, into a safe environment that can detach you away from what you're struggling with. But for those of you who have been asking me, I am gonna tell you everything that I have done over the past 365 days to get me to where I am now, which is the most physically and mentally healthy I've ever been. Um, from 
the least physically and mentally healthy I have ever been. It's been a 180 degree turnaround, you guys. It's been a long year. Without further ado, let's get on with my fitness journey video. Growing up, I was always the bigger girl. Being called the fat kid, being a little bit teased. I was never too badly bullied. I was extremely fortunate for that. But, you know, passing comments from friends, from family, I was used to being told that I was the bigger girl. I was pretty for a fat girl. Backhanded compliments, things like that. It was something that I always experienced and was completely used to. And honestly, I grew quite a thick skin and didn't really let it bother me. I was a happy kid, I was healthy, I was just a bit chubby. I hated exercise, I hated sport, I loved sugar and I loved carbohydrates. I just ate pasta every day and ate sweets every day and I had a great little life. But I never really picked up healthy habits. From a young age, I had unhealthy habits with food and a hatred for exercise. The only form of exercise that I truly enjoyed was dance. I loved to dance. When I was like a tween, like 13, 14, um, and hit puberty, that was when I started to develop some body image issues and formed this desperation to lose weight. I was still the biggest in my year and I was hugely self-conscious. And this is when some even more unhealthy habits than the ones that I previously had with just overeating um, started. I began starving myself. I would stop eating for long periods of time. I lied to my school friends and said that I'd been put on a diet by my doctor, which um, meant that I was only allowed to drink water on Mondays. I was allowed fruit on Tuesdays and water. I think it was like vegetables, fruit and water. Basically, I'd figured out a way where I could eat as little as possible whilst still keeping my body functioning. It was awful. And then on top of that, I discovered cardio and I started going to the gym. I would just walk every single day. I hated running, so I just wouldn't run. I would just walk and uh, not eat enough. I still wanted sugar. I still wanted to eat this food. So that is when I began to binge and I would starve myself throughout the week um, following this diet plan that I decided was legit. And then it would get to the weekend, I'd go to my friend's house or we would go out to a, like a party. Like remember, I'm like 14 years old and I would eat everything. I would eat so much food and then I would feel guilty. I would go home and then I would purge so I would make myself sick. I was very fortunate that I managed to get myself out of that cycle. If you are struggling with that, please tell someone, please go see a doctor, please just get the help that you need. There was a period of time when I was like 18, 19 where I actually started enjoying the gym. I, Tim and I had just got together when we were like 19 and he was massively into the gym. So that's when I first got introduced to weightlifting. I went to his gym with him and he knew one of the trainers there. So he gave me like a plan and I kind of followed that. Like it was all machine work. There were no free weights. So I didn't really understand what I was doing. I was just doing what I was told to do and I was going because Tim was going so my drive wasn't from me it was just from like oh I want to spend time with my boyfriend oh yeah he's written me a plan I'll just do that so it didn't stick because if I don't understand something or if I don't really want to do something I won't do it <laughs> I will not do it so I lost a little bit of weight I built a little bit of muscle and I was feeling really good I was like this is the fittest I've ever been this is great and then I just stopped. It is something about me. I am extremely flippant. I really am. I struggle to stick with things. I have always been obsessive. I'll get obsessed with something and it's all I want to do. And then I'll wake up the next day and I literally have no interest and never had that interest again. I did it with horse riding. I rode every day for like five years. And then one day I just woke up and I said to my mum, like, I don't want to go horse riding today. And I never went back. I literally never went back. My life revolved around it to just 
never going back. It was the same with my issues with food. I was obsessed by it. Like I was obsessed with counting everything. I was obsessed with in, out, everything. And then one day I woke up and I just wasn't anymore, which is why I think I was such a rare case because I don't know why my brain works like that. It's like it just gives up on something. Like I just don't wanna do it anymore. I'm done. Makeup and YouTube are the two things I have ever found that has ever stuck, which is why I love it so much because this never happens. <laughs> this is like a big deal. Anyway, I'm sorry, this is gonna be a really long video. I finished school and then everyone went to uni and this was the beginning of the end for me. Everyone goes to uni. I love my friends more than anything in the world and they've been with me through all of this stuff. All my, oh my God, I'm already tearing up. I think this is gonna be a hard one. <laughs> all of my friends went to uni. Um, they all left, they all moved away. And so for the first year, when they were, you know, freshers, they were so busy, they were making their new friends. I also made myself busy and I formed a new obsession with working. I would not stop working. I took on crazy hours at the retail store I was working at. I worked myself into the ground and made myself so ill. I got glandular fever. That period of my life was my first real experience with, not gonna diagnose myself, but I think I was depressed. I was so lonely, I was sad, and I'm a comfort eater, and I always have been, and I just ate and ate and ate. Like I was bored, I would eat. I was sad, I would eat, and it's just all I did. And at first, it was okay because I was on my feet at work all day. So I was walking like 30,000 steps a day. So it was kind of balancing out a little bit. Like I was slowly gaining weight, but it wasn't like drastic. Like I suddenly start eating loads of food and I'm still not moving. Um, you know, I was, it was slow. I was burning most of it off in my day-to-day -day movement. I got to the point where I couldn't take it anymore and I had to quit my job. For my mental health, I had to get out. I hated where I worked. I didn't get on with my boss. I was in a very negative atmosphere. I was doing more work than I was being paid to do. I just needed out. I needed to go. So I quit my job and decided to try and do YouTube full time. Uh, at this point, I think I'm 20. So this is three years ago. So <laughs> I'm still super ill and YouTube's doing fine but it's not enough for me to earn a living. I'm living at my dad's house. I'm trying to save money. I want to buy a house. I want to move out. I'm no longer really busy. I don't have this crazy routine of like up at 5.30, home at seven. I can make my own hours. I film when I want to film. At this point, my dad was still working. He hadn't retired yet. So I was just in this big old house by myself all day. Obviously friends are still at uni. I'm still with Tim. Um, and I would go and visit Tim a lot, which added partying and booze on top of all of this. <laughs> but for the time that I was at home, I was at home and I was by myself and I was lonely and I was sad. I was really, really sad. And this is when the wait started. Now, I just wanna make one thing super, super, super clear. I don't think that being a bigger girl or guy is a negative thing. If you've watched my videos for a long time, you know when I was a kid, massive source of insecurity for me. In my later teens, early 20s, it didn't bother me, right? And I, and I practiced what I preached. Truly, it was fine. I was comfortable and I was happy in my body. I gained a lot of weight very, very quickly when I took YouTube full time. I was sat on my ass doing this every single day, taking my laptop, walking about five steps to the sofa and editing for hours on end. That was all I did, but I was still comfort eating. I was still just eating. I'd be editing, I'd have like four Kit Kats next to me. Eating because I was bored, 
eating because I was sad. Massive, massive, massive portion sizes because I didn't understand portion size. The weight started piling on. Also, my YouTube channel was kind of stunted. It wasn't growing and I just felt really disheartened and deflated. And that was how I felt for about two years. I lost two grandparents in quite close succession and I filmed that video where I was sat on my living room floor crying. That was another down period for me. So then comes like January, I think, uh, of 2019. And one of my best friends, Laura messages me and she's like, Em, do you wanna go traveling? I've always dreamed of going traveling, going backpacking. It's something I've always wanted to do. And I was like, fuck yeah, of course I wanna go traveling. So we planned that we were gonna go to South America for six and a half weeks. And on that trip, we were gonna climb Machu Picchu in Peru. I was so excited. A year ago today, on the 25th of February, 2019, I decided that I was going to change my life. I decided I want to enjoy this trip with every inch of my body. I wanna be able to climb Machu Picchu. I wanna do it and I don't, I don't even wanna break a sweat. I wanted to be able to run up Machu Picchu. I wanted to get to the top and I wanted to feel amazing and I wanted to be able to walk, carry this rucksack on my back and just enjoy every second and not worry that my physical health was holding me back. And it honestly set a fire under my ass. It was like a switch. I was like, that's it. I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it. And the goal was not to look a certain way. For me, it was so much more personal than that. I wanted to lose the emotional weight. And for me, my sadness and my the struggles that I had in my brain manifested in my weight. All those hours of comfort eating because I was sad was literally sat on my body and every day I could see it. I could see what I was doing to myself because of my brain. That is why I wanted to get rid of the weight. It was more of like a symbolic thing, dropping all of the weight, making myself physically stronger whilst I made myself mentally stronger. That is why I started. We are like 20 minutes into this video and we've just found out why I began this journey. <laughs> Told you it's gonna be a long one. I was flying to Colombia on the 25th of July and on the 25th of Feb, I took photos. I took pictures of my body, never ever thinking that I would show them anywhere, that anyone would ever see them. I did them for myself. Here are the photos that I took on the 25th of February. These pictures make me really, really sad because I look miserable. I look so, so sad in these photos and I was really sad and I was so desperate to change something, but I knew I had to do it the right way. I knew I had to do it in a healthy way. I had caused myself damage in the past by doing it the wrong way and so I knew that what I was about to embark on was going to take time and there was no quick fix. It was gonna be long. I had to retrain how my brain works. It felt like I was standing at the bottom of Machu Picchu and I was about to climb it and I was not in the physical condition to be able to do that. I feel like I have skipped some stuff, but I didn't wanna make this video too sad. So we got a happy ending. Let's move on to how I actually did it. So after I took those photos, um, the first thing I did was I adjusted my diet slightly. I made really small changes. Um, I didn't start exercising for the first month. I focused solely on what I was consuming for the first month. I looked onto my macronutrient calculator and you type in your height, your body weight, at like how much exercise you do. And then you can say, if you're trying to lose weight, remain, gain muscle, you put in what your goals are. So it's tailored to you, which is why I always stress so much, don't copy what I've done. Please, you know, if you're gonna change your diet massively, go to a professional, go to a doctor, tell them, just make sure you're doing it safely, okay? I typed all my information in, 
it gave me a number of calories. I'm not gonna tell you what that is because it will be different to yours, but it gave me a number of calories which would put me in a 10 to 20% calorie deficit. And a calorie deficit is when you are expending more energy than you are intaking or consuming. So you're burning more calories than you're taking in, which is fundamentally how you lose weight or fat. That's how you lose fat. Um, what you don't want is to cut your calories so drastically that you're burning into your muscle supply. Um, that is not what you want. You want to keep your muscle mass as high as you can because the more muscle you have, the more calories you'll burn. And the more calories you'll burn, the more you can eat, which is why I love lifting weights because I get to eat more. So I'm gonna give you some statistics about my body because I know a lot of you are probably just watching for before and afters and then I'll tell you how I did it afterwards, okay? As you guys know, I went and saw a personal trainer and I'm very aware that I was in a very privileged position to be able to get a personal trainer and I know so many people can't. You can do it by yourself. For me, it was just another element of social interaction, um, someone to talk to, because again, I gained a lot of the weight due to just severe loneliness um, because I am a hugely social person. I need human interaction. It's vital for my mental health. So she obviously taught me what to do at the gym. It was also just for me so important to get out of the house every day and go and have someone to see and to talk to. So that's another reason why I hired a personal trainer. But I, again, I'll talk about that later. Before I went and saw her, I was about 210 pounds. The photo that this picture here. But the results I'm gonna show you is from when I first started seeing Monica, okay? Here I have all of my statistics, okay? When I first started to see Monica, I was 90.1 kilograms, so I was about 198 pounds, something like that. My metabolic age was 33, I was 22 at the time. My basal metabolic rate, which is the number of calories that I burn when completely stagnant, when not doing anything, I could lie in my bed all day breathing and I'm not eating anything, I'm literally just sat, not moving. That's how many calories my body would burn. So my body fat percentage was 43% and my muscle percentage was 29% and then 44% water. So that was my starting point. And basically the goal that I set out to myself was I wanna be 50% muscle. I was like, that's it. I wanna be 50% muscle. I wanna be so strong. So that is the goal I set myself. I also had obviously the goal of Machu Picchu. So yesterday I went and I did the same body composition test. My weight is now 71.1 kilograms. So I went from 90.1 to 71.1. And actually I've recently gained a bit of weight. I've gained about three kilograms since traveling and that is muscle. I stopped weighing myself a while ago because I don't care about how much I weigh. I think that's something that's so important. Step off the scale. My goal was to build muscle. And when you build muscle, muscle is denser and heavier than fat. It's got less volume, like I'll look smaller, but I'm heavier. My metabolic age is now 21, which is younger than me from 33. My basal metabolic rate is now 1,460.2 calories. Muscle is more metabolically active than fat. So the more muscle you have, the more energy is used just doing basic day-to-day -day tasks, which means that you are naturally burning more calories all the time. So that's why it's important to gain more muscle because it means you can eat more food, which is great. When you are bigger, when you have more fat, you also need, because your body is larger, it doesn't have to be muscle, you also eat, need to eat more food to keep it functioning because there's more weight carried around, you're using more energy because there's more weight on you. What was really important to me is that even though I was getting smaller, I didn't want my metabolic rate to go down. I didn't want to be having to eat less calories because I wanted to keep my muscle building. Even though I'm like 20 kilograms lighter, I am only burning 20 calories less a day. <laughs> that is less than a rice cake a day, which was my goal. I wanted to keep my metabolism high and I still want to continue to build my metabolism by building more muscle, but I was able to do what I set out to do, which is not burn my muscle away, which is why it's so important not to lower your calories too much because it starts to burn away at your muscle. So that's why it's so important to do it slowly. My fat was 
38.6 kilograms and it is now 20.6 kilograms. I had 25.9 kilograms of muscle. I now have 28.8 kilograms of muscle. So that is a significant amount of muscle build. So numbers are nice because it's a nice way to kind of track what's going on. I would say don't weigh yourself. <laughs> it's gonna fluctuate. If you are gonna weigh yourself, um, do it once every two weeks, maybe once a month. Like just do use it as like a, a kind of marker point, but give your body time to regulate itself. So it's more of a consistent reading rather than doing it every single day when you might have eaten loads of salt the day before and you're holding loads of water and then you think, oh my God, I've gained weight. And then that can start, you know, dangerous things. Oh God, I feel like I've been talking for a long time already. So I have lost a lot of fat and I have gained a lot of muscle and I feel so amazing in my body because now when I look at myself in the mirror, I don't see someone who's carrying emotional weight on their body. I see someone who's worked really hard and I look in the mirror and I feel really proud and it, I can't even explain how positive that is for your mental health, for my mental health. It's not about me looking in the mirror and being self-conscious about being a bigger girl. It was about what that weight represented and why I had put the weight on. And the fact that it's now gone um, means so much more than being able to wear a smaller dress size. It is just an after effect of all of the work I was doing up here and with my body to make myself a happier and healthier person. Okay, so. We've got a goal. We want to climb Machu Picchu. We want to gain muscle. I want to get 50% muscle mass. I want to be strong. I want to be hench. So what am I going to do? I'm going to start for the first month by just looking at my diet. So I decided, I made up a little thing in my head because I'm quite a visual person. On my plate, so that I can still eat the same amount because I had massive portion sizes, right? I didn't understand portion control. So I was like, right, I'm used to eating this much food and I don't wanna feel like I'm not allowing myself to. So what I'm gonna do is make all of the things on this plate slightly healthier versions. I told myself anything that's on my plate which is white, I am going to turn brown and then half of everything that is brown I am going to turn green. That is honestly how I started. I didn't wanna cut out carbs. I wanted to eat all of the main food groups. I thought it was important because I had tried not eating carbs in the past, didn't work for me. So I changed all of my rice, my pasta, my bread to brown bread, rice and pasta, which keeps you full for longer and also it requires more energy to digest. But when you look at it on a plate, it's the same volume of food and I'm still eating a sandwich or I'm still eating cheese on toast. It's just a slightly healthier alternative. So yeah, I changed everything from white to brown. First step. I was having these massive portions of pasta, but it was brown pasta. It was slightly better. And then also half of everything that was brown, I would turn to green. Like I would take like a whole grain carb and turn it into a carb from a vegetable. For the first month, that is what I did. I just started switching things out and I started experimenting because that's another thing. I didn't cook. I hated cooking. I've always, always hated cooking. Now, I absolutely love to cook, which <laughs> I never thought would be a thing. So I just started making healthier changes and I always made sure there was protein on my plate. I was eating in a calorie deficit, I was eating a lot of fiber, which is extremely important for your digestion, which in turn is also very good for weight loss. Um, so I was eating loads of vegetables. There was always a vegetable on my plate. There was always a form of protein on my plate. There was always carbs and there was always fat. I started drinking water. I drank no water. I never used to drink water and now this thing is always next to me and I try and drink two or three of these a day. Drinking water is so important because a lot of the time when you get what you think is a hunger cue, sometimes it is thirst and your body can't differentiate the two. So if you're feeling, if it's like a random time of day when you don't normally eat and you start to feel hungry, have a glass of water, give yourself 20 minutes. If you're still hungry, go and have some food. Don't, you know, go and eat. 
eat if you're hungry. But just check, have a glass of water. Oh, maybe I wasn't that hungry after all. Maybe I was just thirsty. Oh, have another glass of water. Make sure my body is hydrated. Very important. That is how I started. And that's what I did for the first month. And in that first month, I probably lost about 10 pounds. It was time for me to start incorporating exercise, which was the thing that I knew I was gonna struggle with the most. So I went to the gym and I had an induction meeting with my now personal trainer, Monica. And I said, I've got this goal. I wanna climb Machu Picchu. I wanna be fit. I explained my history with her, um, with my body. And I was very honest with her and I was like, can you help me? I started seeing Monica twice a week um, and that was all I was doing. I was just going to see Monica twice a week. Again, I'm very aware that I am extremely fortunate to be in a position to have a personal trainer. If you are uncomfortable going to the gym by yourself, then I suggest you go to classes. Um, my gym has free ones as part of my membership, which is absolutely incredible. If you have that, just go to a class. Get some knowledge, basic knowledge of exercises and what you need to be doing. I'm also gonna link down below some YouTubers and Instagrammers that I have found so inspiring and massively, massively helpful on this journey. There are some girls that have completely changed the way I see fitness. If you follow some of these girls, they'll give you some workouts. I can't teach you I'm just telling you what I did, okay? There are loads of people online who can show you what to do and tell you what to do. But I was fortunate enough to go and have one-on-one -on -one sessions with a personal trainer. I loved Monica for a start. Um, we got on really, really well and I felt really comfortable and I trusted her a lot, which is so important. We would do two sessions a week, kind of full body, um, with some cardio and strength training to the cardio was to burn the fat and the strength training was to build my muscle because something that I had done wrong in the past was I just did cardio but honestly if you guys are watching this video and you want to lose weight because you want to look a certain way I'm not that's completely fine you can do whatever you want <laughs> but if that is the case cardio is not going to get you the body that you want strength training is building your body molding your body building muscle is going to get you the shape that you want just doing loads and loads of cardio is gonna get rid of the fat but once all the fat is gone there's not gonna be any definition that's probably what you want and it also will in turn build muscle which means you can eat more calories which means you won't drop your metabolism which means that you're not going to gain the weight back when you start eating more food so i started strength training and i realized that i really liked it i really enjoyed feeling strong i couldn't see changes in like i couldn't see my muscles yet like i couldn't see changes in my muscles but i could see the changes and feel the changes in my strength during my sessions, like I could lift heavier. I started having achievements and hitting milestones, which had nothing to do with the way I looked, which is obviously great for me because again, I wasn't doing it to look a certain way. I was doing it to get fitter and healthier. And I started to feel it. This is working. This is actually working. So then I started to get a little bit addicted to the endorphins. And at the end of a session, I would feel amazing. You know, my body started to adjust to these sessions because after a session, I would go home and I'd literally have a nap. I'd be exhausted. My, I struggled so much at the beginning because my body was not used to exercise. Like I hadn't exercised in years. So those two sessions were enough for me. And then I would always make sure I ate a good amount of protein afterwards. And that would be me for the week. So I was doing this for about a month and then I had another weigh-in. And after the first month, I had lost 2% of my body fat and I'd gained 1% muscle. I was like, oh my God, I can do this. It gave me such a confidence boost. And then I was like, I'm ready to add some extra cardio into my session. So I decided to start doing park runs. You guys know that I still do my park run every Saturday morning to this day, which for me was amazing because it's a social thing. There's hundreds of people. I do it with Tim and I do it with my friends Tom and Lizzie and we go for a 5k run every Saturday. Prior to that first park run, I had never run a mile before. I'd never run a mile ever, 
I'd never done it. I was absolutely bricking it because I hated running. I hated it. So I went and did my first park run and I ran about, mm, I'd say about 80% of the way. Three months into my fitness journey was when I started park running. I was so incredibly proud of myself. I cried. <laughs> I was so proud. I couldn't believe it. And I hadn't even run the whole way. And then after that, I was hooked on running because that endorphin hit was, oh, damn, it was good. So I wanted that again. Sorry, hi, I really needed to wee. <laughs> I've been sat here for a while. Yes, so then once I started doing my park runs, I then had my next weigh in and my body fat percentage was then 40% and my muscle percentage was 32%. I have lost 3% of my fat, but I had actually gained 3% of my muscle. So then I decided I wanted to add a little bit more strength slash cardio. So I started doing spin, which works the muscles in your legs. So it's a little bit of strength and resistance training, but also quite a lot of cardio. So I added my fourth session of the week in. And then I started Zumba, which is again, pure cardio. So now I was doing two strength sessions, two cardio sessions, and then one strength slash cardio session a week. So I was up to five days a week. And then in the final month before my big trip, I decided to up my PT sessions to three. So I was training six days a week. And by now I loved working out. I had done what I had set out to do, which was retrain my brain to love exercise and to see food as fuel. I love food. I enjoy my food. It's not purely fuel. I'm still an emotional eater, but I have other things that I do now when I'm sad and I have other things to do when I'm happy. I still go out for a meal to celebrate. I'll still treat myself to a chocolate bar when I'm on my period and I'm feeling miserable. I still do that stuff. It's just less. It's not every day. I don't rely on food to manage my emotions anymore. So over the course of those five months was when I definitely made the biggest dent in the journey. And then Liz asked me if I wanted to run a 10K. And I said, yes, because I was doing 5Ks every weekend. I was like, yeah, I reckon I'll be able to do that. And it actually fell the weekend before I left. So my 10K ended up being the last workout I did before I went traveling, which was just perfect to me. It was like all the stars were aligning and I was gonna do something that I would have been so proud of, which was something I would never in a million years of thought I could do. I was gonna run a 10K, which I know for so many people isn't that far, but for me, that was a huge, huge, a 5k was a huge deal. A 10k, wow. So yeah, like I said, I started to love exercise and I would do it anywhere. I went to Cornwall with Tim's family and we went to two spin classes and the local gym twice in a week of being there on a holiday. I was never known to exercise on holiday, but there I was in the gym sweating. I loved it and I couldn't get enough. And then Tim and I decided to do like a practice for the 10K and we ended up running an 8K together, just me and him on our holiday in Cornwall last year. And it was one of the highlights of the trip. We had the best day. It didn't feel like a chore, didn't feel like a workout. It felt like a day out that we were working really hard. I was like, this is how I make it my lifestyle. I love doing this. There is a pair of jeans, okay, that I tried on on the 22nd of March. I tried them on this morning. Here is the kind of progress of me eventually fitting into the jeans compared to now. Craziness. Fast forward a little bit to the 14th of July, which is my final weigh-in before I went traveling. My body fat percentage was 32% and my muscle percentage was 38. I had lost 11 percent of my body fat and I had gained nine percent muscle. I felt so strong and I was excited for this trip and I was so ready to go and my mental health had just, I just felt like a new person. And then on the 21st of July, three days before I flew away, it was my time to run my 10k, which I smashed, if you ask me. I ran 10 kilometers. I felt amazing. Like I felt like I could keep running. I couldn't believe it. I, I was just 
so happy and so proud and it was just such an enormous achievement and this for me is why it's so important for me to do things on a goal based um, system rather than looking a certain way because yeah it felt amazing to fit into a pair of jeans that I couldn't wear but it felt so much more amazing to cross a finishing line for Tim to be so proud of me and my friends to be there cheering me on like it was just the best day I was so happy and fitting into a pair of jeans will never give me that feeling. It just isn't enough for me. I need to be driven by a goal that means something to me. And that did. Three days later, I left and I went on my trip. And the last part of the trip was climbing Machu Picchu. And I did it. And I felt incredible. Like, I was just... I was just so happy like when I got up there and I was like this is what I've been working for for the f for the last five months I did everything that I did and it wasn't easy like changing basically every element of your lifestyle in five months isn't easy like I'm with you I understand that it is really hard and you have to be so determined and you have to work so hard and I don't just mean physically like it was an emotional roller coaster for me. I had to overcome so much in my brain, in my mind. They self sabotage. I had to undo so much. Honestly, just getting to the top was really amazing for me. I came home and I had lost some muscle. I'd also lost some fat. I was pretty lean. We were walking all day every day and I wasn't training. I wasn't lifting weights. And then I had two weeks before I was going away again. So I just tried to get back into my routine, you know. And then I went to Asia where the food is incredible and I drank so much beer and I came home and I'd gained some weight. I'd gained some fat back and I was like, that was completely expected. But compared to how I would have reacted to that in the past where I would have beaten myself up, I was like, no. I went, I enjoyed myself, I had an incredible time. Are you telling me I should turn down Thai food? No, <laughs> Thai food is my favorite. I couldn't wait to get back to the gym. I actually did a few workouts whilst we were in Thailand. I went to the gym with Nathan a couple of times, I went to the gym with Tim, and I still wanted to try and maintain some of this muscle, but um, it was quite hard, <laughs> I won't lie. <laughs> I was too busy having fun. So fast forward to now. I have been home for my trip for like four or five, four months now. I'm completely back in the routine. I'm still working out four to five times a week. At the moment, I have actually started eating a little bit more. I am trying to focus purely now on muscle build rather than fat loss. Fat loss is kind of just like an after result of building muscle. I currently feel incredible in my own skin. I feel like a different person. I can't believe how much of a change I can go through in a year. That's insane to me. And now I'm going to give you guys my top tips on how to start your fitness journey. This is not me telling you, you need to lose weight, okay? But if this is something that you really would love to know, then this is for you. Drink more water, guys. Hydration is so important, regardless of what you're trying to do. Make sure you have vegetables on every plate. Remember, white to brown, brown to green. That just helped me a lot. Still eating carbs. Find a exercise that you absolutely love. I love strength training. I love lifting weights. I love dancing, so I love Zumba. I love going for a run with my friends to keep my body moving. Don't start in January. Start today. That's what I did. The 25th of Feb was a completely random day and I never looked back. Follow fitness influencers that are preaching a positive and healthy message. Again, I will link some down below that know what they are talking about. They are educated in what they are talking about. Educate yourself as much as you can. I have learned so much in the last year because I'm constantly watching videos. I'm reading up on things. I have followed so many Instagram accounts. I just surround myself with it to incorporate it in my life in my everyday life. Have a goal that isn't appearance-based. 
Set yourself a goal. Is it to run a 5K? Is it to run a 10K? Is there a weight you wanna be able to squat? Find a goal that you want to hit that will fill you with so much pride when you do. That's so important. Make sure you're eating enough, guys. If you're not eating enough food, your body can't function. Your body can't exert the energy that you're trying to exert. It's a waste of your time and it drops your metabolism. Make sure you're fueling your body properly with a healthy, balanced diet. If you put sugar in your tea, stop right now. I can't tell you how much of a difference that made. I drink like five, six cups of tea a day. I used to drink like 10, but I have replaced quite a few of those with water now because I drink so much more water. And I used to have a teaspoon of sugar in every single one. That's like 10 teaspoons of just pure sugar. That's terrible for you. So stop that now. That was another small change I could make. Small changes and do it slowly. It's taken me a year to get to where I am now. A year of a lot of changes and a year of consistency. Do things that you can keep up. If you're gonna just drop it after a week, that's not a lifestyle change, okay? I think that's it. I've been talking for a really, really long time. I haven't gone into great depth about workouts or things like that because I'm doing a full Q&A with my PT. That will be coming in the next couple of weeks. So make sure you subscribe if you're new so that you get notified when that goes live because me and Monica filmed a video last week answering your questions about my workout routine, my diet. We went into depth. This video was more about my personal experience, whereas that video is helping you to put some changes into action in your life. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you're excited for that video. That's coming very soon. Thank you so much for sticking through. I know this was long. If you wanna make a change in your life, you can do it. Like, I am a walking example of somebody who completely changed their life and it wasn't easy, but it's so worth it. And I'm so proud of myself. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you've got any questions, leave them in the comments. I'll be in the comments. This I'm filming this video on the day it's going live. Like today is the day and I'll be in the comments replying to you guys. Share this with your friends if they need a little bit of a boost of motivation. But at the end of the day, you don't need to change yourself. If you're happy and you're living a life that you're proud of, you don't need to lose weight to please anyone, to look or feel beautiful. That's not what this is about. Thank you guys so much for watching. You mean the world to me. Thank you for all your support over the past year. You've been so supportive as I've just been a little bit MIA. I'm loving making these videos. YouTube has just been amazing for me recently. I've just loved every second and I just feel really lucky. Have the best day and I will see you on Thursday for a slightly lighter video. <laughs> Bye.